Homestead, Florida, so that we can see the new kids. Because that's what we're talking about is Sean Cunningham's new kids here on the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo as we carry on with our season eight, simply the BS. I am your host, Eight Dan Stanadu, and I would like to welcome my good friends. And first up, I got Jack Jack Hall. So, back to the stuff. I don't know what else to say. Let's get, let's get going. <laughs> I, f- I figured it was that, let's, or let's, let's kick, let's kick, let's go, let's go to score. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we'll I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do introductions at the end. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, James, James Cotta, tell us, tell us your score of of uh, Jack's opening. <laughs> well, I don't rate it on objective quality. No. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be here. Ready to talk new kids for 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that includes scoring, right? <laughs> and Nick. That's why I want to get right to it. <laughs> and because I know the next episode is going to go long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, make sure your PVR, PVR is set that it that it, uh, it doesn't cut off at the hour. You know. <laughs> yeah. We might run over. Tell the affiliates we might run over. All right, Nick, <laughs> say your piece before uh, before we get down to business and uh, race through this. Greetings and salutations. Uh, you know, I, I don't think this is going to be a quick episode. There's a lot to new kids. I mean, they sing, they dance. That's true. Step they by hang step. up. Gonna give it to you, girl. <laughs> That's uh, that's a new kid song, right? <laughs> did, they, did, did they all just move to the block? Is that the idea? <laughs> like at the same time? Yeah, probably. Now, now I don't understand why they're called that. There was that's there there was a rezoning. <laughs> <laughs> <The> rezoning. <laughs> they, and the block Jordan. was ex- extended. <laughs> Thus, they were the new kids on the block before they were the kids on the other block. Are you sure that they were? Because wouldn't that make them the kids on the new block? No, no, <laughs> extended. Ah, okay. So they're the new kids there was on the, the extended city, block. The... <laughs> Nick. Well, that that's <laughs> accurate, but <they're, laughs> but you know, the, where, where's the pizzazz in the new kids on the extended block? Well, oh. see, thankfully, I'm lost. So that's oh, that's okay. on the positive side that Nick will set clearly, me right up. Nick, Nick is clearly trying to avoid having to tell everybody the plot of this movie. <laughs> Oh no 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 no! That that's easy. Nice. Yeah. No. No. This is the big bat, except a little bit more violent and rapey, which <laughs> is saying something because the big bat was pretty rapey. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> what this is is uh, some Arby brats have their parents die and they're shipped off to Florida. Now, obviously, this was funded by the Florida Tourism Board. <laughs> So it shows all the highlights of Florida. <laughs> um, now, they're new in school. There's a bet who can sleep with the sister. And uh, then Floridians do what Floridians do. Um, <laughs> not a complicated movie. The most interesting thing about this movie was actually, I thought, the trailer trying to sell it as a horror film from Sean Cunningham. Was the most interesting thing about this movie. Because this is, well, I mean, it's, 
Yeah, no, no, it's just a gang of hoodlums trying to get in the sister's pants for an hour. Did, did you uh, did you just watch the trailer hoping that then you wouldn't have to watch the movie? Or? <laughs> I don't usually watch the trailers for the movies myself. But I, 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 I stick to the film because that's what we're talking about. I just... I, I had actually uh, never heard of this movie before, and I just wanted to know what it was going to in for. Yeah. Uh, nobody could deny that Sean Cunningham deserves to be on the list of BS. You know? Like, like I mean... No doubt about Sean, that. But, man, this film is... Uh, I don't know. I, I it, it doesn't embrace the Boogaloo as much as Friday the 13th did. It just give it to you it's it's got it's it's really it's a strange it's a strange beast because it's it's mean it's got <laughs> it, it, it's got schlock elements it's got you know it's it's got all the elements it takes to be the movie it's just somewhere along the line i think that sean cunningham thought he was a mainstream director and tried to make a mainstream film out of this uh with maybe just a little bit more a little bit more of a mean edge hard edge and, and violence but i think that's kind of what 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 went wrong with this one from a boogaloo perspective? Yeah, it, it does. Dri- it does drift dangerously close to being a good movie. Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's got some. It's got. It, I mean, it's got enough over the top elements to keep it into that B category. Uh, but but it's also got some just you know, like you said, really mainstream style storytelling that is intermixed with this weird, uh, flo- uh, you know, Florida man who. Um, like Florida Panhandle, um, Southern Hick storyline of, uh, and we, I don't I don't think we mentioned James Spader James as the Spader, lead bad guy, right. uh, in with peroxide blonde hair and and peroxide blonde eyebrows. Did anyone <laughs> else start to wonder? Is this where he last started to lose his hair? The, the, the <laughs> they used a little bit more peroxide than they needed to. They used a lot. That's yeah, sure. yeah. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> and every film after this, he was bald. I think it's funny. If you take, if you change James Spader and his ridiculously over the top performance and his insanely over the top Southern accent out of this oh, film. Oh, he's the best thing in this movie. <laughs> like it, it does, it does, it would really tone down the whole, uh, the whole Boogaloo feel of it for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, that is that's a huge amount of the of the joy of this the enjoyment for me of this film was uh, was Spader's like weird accent where he's money money talks and the rest is bullshit. <laughs> uh, yeah, he goes for it, and I don't know why because you know it's Florida. It's not like uh, Tennessee or I guess they're close, but people it's, like that have that accent. Panhandle, I guess. Like, pan, I mean, it's the. I guess it's the Panhandle. I never. I didn't look up the town on the map, but I mean, the Panhandle is more like that because it's closer to like Louis. It's next to Louisiana. It's. They, they <laughs> said they were two hours away from Disneyland. Or Disney yeah. World. Or Dis- yeah. Disney yeah. World, rather. Yeah. They better so not be that would actually put Disney them World. in the northern half of Florida. Mm. Well, he could have been born there and moved over. Lord knows this 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 film. One thing, if you're if you're looking at. At uh, rednecks equal boogaloo. It, it has boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, it's this, not this lacking would, that. Would oh, the, there it. are elements of boogaloo in this. Ex- example: the father hitting on the daughter in the first scene of this movie. Oh my god! I know. <laughs> <laughs> go, go into that. Un- unpack that. Oh, I mean, the father is it. not in this movie long, but his one scene is him waking up the kids to go jogging. First, he tells his son to get up. And it, when he has trouble getting up, threat says, "What you were masturbating too late last night," and then wakes up the daughter with a "Get that sexy body up." <laughs> they do have an interesting relationship, yeah. Get that sexy body up was so creepy. I was like, "Dude, this is boogaloo through the roof." This is like the first two minutes of the movie. Right? <laughs> oh, I was excited. It's like, <laughs> yes, we got up. a winner here, and that the rest of the movie. Isn't that, but it was a weird line. No, 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 yeah, no. Well, like to say, because the thing about the movie is it, is it opens and you're like, and, and then he's training these kids and you're like, okay. So he, he talks to this kid about jacking off and then, and then he tells his daughter what a sexy body she has. And then he, he's training them like, cause he's a military guy. And then he goes to some award ceremony with the mom and then she dies and it's like three minutes in. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> they fit in what should have been like a half hour's worth of stuff into like almost like just they just get it out of the way. 
like you know and and you're like oh he gets a phone call they're dead and then and then they're in florida it's just insane that's so that you can spend way more time on the uh on the pointless nature of trying to establish all the uh characters at school that, that it doesn't really matter to before you actually get to the real movie which is which is the you know the end <laughs> yeah the, the the third act is the third act is strong but yeah, it's, there's a lot of wandering to get there. Yeah, the second <laughs> act, I I just found the second act to be really confused. I was oh, yeah. just like, like they say, the first act is over right away. Yeah, but it's just like, what what's this movie about? Is this like a teen angst movie with with some like crazy crazy um, uh, rednecks in it? And then it's just like, oh no no, this is totally like now we're into straw dogs territory. <laughs> so all right. <laughs> That's the thing is, I, I wasn't sure. I'm like, is it a horror film? Is it an action film? And then eventually you kind of settled it on it. It's being a thriller, but I mean, going into it, I didn't know. I mean, and and like I say, it, it even when they first show up, you know, to the to the to Florida, like you're thinking to yourself for a little while, okay, so the boogaloo's kind of being there. It hasn't been huge, but it's kind of there. Maybe it'll stick around. You know, the the the. The, the 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 gang that uh, Spader's character leads is the characters' names were Gideon, Mooney, Gordo, and Joe Bob, which just definitely sounds very Boogaloo. <laughs> but then it just kind of, like, but like I say, it's 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 got a hard edge to it, but it's just not, mm, it's just not crazy, you know. So, so they moved to they moved to Florida with their uncle, um, their they, who seems kind of estranged from them, and. Uh, and they're going to help him with his. He's just purchased an amusement park, a a really rundown amusement park. And I wrote down in my notes: Is this the park from Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny? Oh yeah, it, it, I don't know. <laughs> I actually wonder. <laughs> there, there were a bunch of Santa's uh, fun <laughs> Funland type uh, amusement parks throughout the states. There's a whole documentary on them actually. Oh, nice. Um. um and they were all competing. Yeah. It was it, it was a bizarre <laughs> thing, and none of them were left. No, none of them. They couldn't work together. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made a trivia that, that I that I know. Uh, this was written by uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's dad. No kidding. Yeah. I was yes, wondering Steve, that. Steve I saw his name in the yeah. credits and went Gyllenhaal. Holy shit! Yeah, and then how I many, forgot to look it up. How many Jillian Halls can there be? I have, you know, uh, <laughs> there's, at least, there's at least four. Yeah, uh, <laughs> how the kids got into the uh, got into the industry. Yeah, they were, they were Hollywood kids. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get that. No, that's cool. Yeah, um, uh, but Lori Laughlin is, uh, is uh, starring in this. Uh, so in the opening scene, she she goes for a run with her dad, and she's doing all kinds of. Uh, calisthenics and she's you know compete and she's going to compete at school and something and i thought you know i'm glad she learned from this that uh you don't have to work this hard on your extracurriculars to get into college that's that's (laughs) right i was was waiting for the line waiting till one of us could get it in and you you (laughs) did james not only did you get it in but that was strong <laughs> See, I was assuming from the dance scene that it was a dance scholarship she was on. Oh my gosh. Big big hair scholarship maybe. I mean, she's her her, she, her, uh, her, her poofy uh do and helmet head uh and uh, James Spader going There should have been an Oscar here for the the hair designer actually, honestly. <laughs> it's some great work. Uh <laughs> We got Eric Stoltz as the as the nice guy kid. The cast yeah. is the cast is uh, is really neat, actually. Oh yeah. Um, the 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 main the main guy disappeared. Uh, I don't know what else he's done. Sh- uh, Shannon Presby. I don't know what else he went on to do, but um, went on to become a lawyer. Oh really? Yeah, he became a, became a very successful prosecutor. Oh. Well. Uh, he he was in uh, I think seven episodes of a television show after this, and then he just left the industry and and went on <laughs> to become a lawyer. So. Wow. I mean, it was good for him. It was a good choice. A very successful lawyer. Um, well, I, I am almost ready to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I've kind of talked this one out already. It's been like 10 minutes. <laughs> I have next to nothing to say about this movie. <laughs> hey, I, have, I have one question. I have one question that maybe that, maybe that will, will uh, generate a little conversation and then we'll go to scoring. So at one point, things are ramping up. Things have escalated very quickly. 
Uh, and and honestly, our heroes have not helped. Um, nope. Because because it's a little shoving at school, and then our hero Lauren breaks into James Spader's house and oh. like threatens to kill him. So it really like it. This was not a one sided escalation. And then you know James Spader's upset by that. Uh, so things are kind of ramping along, and then one of the guys says he wants out. He wants done with James Spader and his crew. And James Spader says, you "Want out? You're you're out." And I I had to stop him like. Out of what exactly? Because I was never clear what they do besides dog fighting. Well, and there was talk about <laughs> at that point. There was talk about some sort of like, well, you don't get the money or whatever from something. Yeah, they're and drug, so they're drug like, dealers. They they, they, they show like, they show like you know like a half an ounce of weed or something in his house when they break in, but like there's no other that there's that they're moving drugs. <laughs> no, they did establish that there was a couple of points. Where, where, uh, James, like James Spader's a big time drug dealer, is from what I gather. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, so it was it, like cocaine. It was like, it was hard like, stuff. They, yeah, yeah, and he's establishing heavies? drugs as well as taking a lot of drugs. Are they as heavies then? <laughs> I, that, I say, I, they're I they're sex, it was, it they was very confusing because the one time we actually saw drugs, he, they were holding a bag of weed and then said China white. <laughs> <laughs> God bless Sean Cunningham for no for having no idea what drugs were in the mid eighties. <laughs> yeah, that's that's impressive. Don't you think about it? Doing went, research would not have been hard in the mid eighties. Either that, or he was so high on China White that he was just like like he snorted all the China White yeah, and and about- then had to substitute it with a bag of weed. They're about to shoot the scene, and they're like, "Where's the prop bag? <laughs> Where's the prop bag of China White? Uh, prop bag? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> here, here, take this. This is close enough. <laughs> yeah, I got. I don't know. I got something left. Um, yeah. Something to take the edge yeah. off. At the end of the day is all I got. <laughs> go, go into the cupboard. Okay, pull it out. <laughs> so just uh, let's let's just talk about the. Maybe we can just talk about the overall, um, like. If these are all rednecks, not just the good, not just the bad guys, but all the good guys except for Eric Stoltz's character is just totally out of place. Yeah. Uh, every other character, even the ones that are likable, that the in this town are just like the most like. Just, there were other characters in this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, everybody. Like everybody I did not see a single person redneck. that was not involved in the plot. Was everybody, oh, the police, the, the the uncle, the police officers, everybody's just such a stupid redneck in this town. Oh, the police you officer, know? good lord. I mean, how does anything get done? Well, again, and and for another time, well, you know, we can't really do anything because we don't really have any evidence. <laughs> there's, no, there's no evidence, just to, aside from eyewitness testimony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and by the way, Homestead, Florida, uh, about as far south in Florida as you can go. Okay. Uh, right next to the Everglades National Park and Key Largo. Yep. Uh, south of Miami and five hours drive from <laughs> from Disney World. Wow. And really not close at all to um, to Louisiana. Dude. No, no, not no. anywhere close to the Panhandle. I'll be uh, I'll, uh, as as far away from the Panhandle as you can get and still be in Florida, basically. Yeah. yeah. It's, so so <laughs> all basically, right. all that they're hoping is that these guys came out of the Everglades. Because yeah, it's, it's fucking close to the Everglades. Yeah, that's all I can think. <laughs> They're the descendants of the people who got trapped in that hotel in Key Largo. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's go to scoring. Uh, yeah. We, each, every, we've done our best to search in our this search, out. In our search for the ultimate B-movie, we rate each film in five categories, none of which are objective quality. The first category is called Schlock Appeal, and we start with Stan. In our search for the ultimate big movie, we stumbled across the new kids, and we <laughs> took a wrong turn. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, it it has some schlock. It's it's uh, the, the way I I liken this was that I actually felt that watching this movie with the boogaloo lens actually hurt the movie because <laughs> because when we started watching it started watching it and it and yes you get the you get the the interaction with the son and the daughter and yes you feel like okay we're on a boogaloo track and then it just kind of kind of 
wends its way to the end and I'm not really sure where it's supposed to go or what what I'm supposed to be watching and every minute I'm like okay is this gonna be Boogaloo hmm. no nope, not really no nope, nope nope and so <laughs> so I felt like I, I was just kind of in a heightened state of waiting for Boogaloo that never came and it's not like waiting for for Godot or something like that. <laughs> I was about to say that's, that sounds like a really interesting play. Waiting for yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but the, in this case, I was I was waiting for it. Never really came, so I'm only going to go with a four. Wow, I, I you know, judging from your lead up, I I was expecting a one or two. Um, I'll I'll give it one point for Sean Cunningham on the dads from Slock, and and one point begrudgingly because. The title, either of the titles, I believe this is also called Strangleland or something like that. Strike Back, I don't care. Um, <laughs> has has nothing to do with the movie itself. So I can only get it up for a two. Oh yeah, that there's the um, there's a the original poster which was pretty cool, and then there's yeah, like for the DVD release a poster with an axe because again, they're still trying to sell this as a horror movie when it's not really a horror movie. Like, and there's, I don't believe there's an axe in this entire film. So <laughs> oh, yeah. But the, the, the poster, the poster, it's the first poster is Boogaloo. Oh yeah. It, like, the first poster is that is amazing. A new ticket to terror from the director of Friday the 13th. They are yeah. alone on their own. <laughs> I can't. I can't even read it. <laughs> it's it's a lot of words. There's like a hundred words on this on, on this poster. It's basically it's it's trying to be. A, it's like everyone come up with a pitch line and then they just put all of them on there. Yeah, and then <laughs> the new kids and they can't like, afford to lose. And when that's about all I had, that and Sean Cunningham going into this, I'm I'm on my expectations were high. I'll give it a five because um, it, it definitely has that B-movie feel. Nobody can mis- ass- mistake this, I don't think, for a mainstream high-budget movie, but it it's trying too hard to be one to get any higher score than that. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I, there, there are masks on this poster. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> now that I can see it, they are alone on their own, without parents, without friends, trying to make it in a new town, facing a dangerous new enemy, a gang that will stop at nothing, to add one new word to their lives, terror. Were there masks in That's this why movie? I thought it was an action film, though. So I'm, I'm imagining they're in the office there and like, hey, can you get the intern to punch this up a little bit? <laughs> maybe maybe take like half the words out. Like, now nah, he's gone for lunch. All right, just print it. Yeah, because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, oh, man, I love the poster. Like, that poster's so boogaloo. Like, them in, in obviously a theme park, somebody with a gun. You got all the crazy elves in behind them. I mean, that's that's boogaloo. <laughs> the, uh, I, I tell you, you know, Nick mentioned the trailer. If, if you took the last line of this movie and made that the beginning of your trailer, I would have been there opening night. See where the dope crazed vandals met their end. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's your, that's your friggin' tag for the poster. That's, that's, that's what gets the VHS picked up right there. Um, uh, I, four, <laughs> I think, like, I think, I think all the packaging and everything was there, but yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it doesn't nail it. Does it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't stick the landing. If you had decided, if you took everything in this movie that is, took that script and decided, I'm going to make this Boogaloo, you could have. Oh, yeah. With not much work. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I don't know, it, it seemed like they couldn't decide what the tone was supposed to be. Because yeah. it, it, it goes, it wildly goes from, like, deliverance to, like, <laughs> after. It's an after school special. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> swing. And and I think Eric no one told Eric Stoltz which one he was in, clearly. <laughs> well I don't then, think at any point. <laughs> what a crazy time in his career. He he does this, the mask comes out I think three months later, and he had just missed out on on uh, you know, a lot of other key roles like and his career so his back, career back takes off when, back yeah. to the future, clearly, obviously. So I mean you have the back to the future thing and they just missed out on. Um, you have the the mask about to come out and get him a Golden Globe nomination, and then you have this kind of sandwiched in between all this. Like, what a crazy time in his life! <laughs> what's what's he do now? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. 
Like, <laughs> always oh, on some show. All right, uh, let's let's not get distracted. <laughs> we'll we'll cover. I'm sure we'll do a whole season of Eric Stoltz at some point. Um, <laughs> the next category is called more heart than budget. Um. Well, the okay. So so looking at the Wikipedia page um, for this, <laughs> it shows the it shows the budget being uh, really quite high. Um, and then and then oh, that's as, not good. And then, as far as the uh, let let me just uh, bring that up again. I I'm... six million. It, it was six million, which is boo, which is definitely B movie level, but high for Boogaloo. But high for Boogaloo. And then it says the box office is one hundred ninety nine thousand one hundred and eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's just say it did <laughs> it, it did not do well. Like it's. I, I, and it's hard to say, right? Because like everybody, when when you talk about the cast, you talk about the fact that you've got Laurie Laughlin, you've got Eric Stoltz, you've got um, James Spader, you've got Tom Atkins. You know, like you've got recognizable people in it. But I don't know where they were in their careers at that in 1985. But other than James Spader, kind of bringing the bringing the crazy, I wasn't feeling a whole lot of you know, love for anything like, oh, wow, this is a movie, like, and a great movie, I'm gonna explore everything that I can with this character. And six million is a lot to go into Homestead, Florida, and get what they got, which really wasn't very much in my <laughs> in my mind. You know, so I'm I'm guessing it had to be Sean Cunningham, um, um, you know, and the China White. So I'm only gonna go with the uh, three. Yeah, no one is u- uniformly bad in this movie. Everyone gives a performance. Um, I'll, I'll I'll give it a three for James Spader. You know, really laying it out there. Um, no one can say he phoned it in, but everyone is competent for six million. I want to see like see some something from somebody, and James Spader is the only one who brought it. It's a professionally made movie. But uh, oh. there's not a lot of passion in the movie, so I'll give it a four. Four for you. I, I missed Nick's because I was trying to. Fi- I was back to trying to figure out if this is the same place from Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> what was your, what was your, what what was your score you, there? Now? I, I, I gave you it a three. Just hit pause three, here, or three, uh, no. yeah. <laughs> well, I can watch Thumbelina again I mean, yeah. while we're doing the rest of the scoring. <laughs> uh, you did develop a crush on that actress. I yeah. Well, she's. Lovely, now pushing sixty lady. Um, <laughs> I, I will. Uh, I, I I actually was gonna go a little higher, and then you told me six million dollars, and I'm like, I doubt buying the park would have been a hundred k. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you could have just you don't have to rent this thing. You just outright purchase it for that, um, and then just burn the thing down when you're done. Uh, so two for me. Uh, what the fuck moments. <sighs> Um, yeah, well, I mean, the, the top, the top was a little what the fuck, and I, and I think there is moments of what the fuck that are, that are in here. When, when I think of what the fuck for this movie, I primarily think of the, of the, like, kind of rapid changes between, um, between the style of movie that they're, that he's trying to tell, (laughs) where it's just like, oh, it's that teen movie, oh! No, it's straw dogs. It's like, whoa, what are you like what the fuck? Why are we going here? And then there's a point where they're at the prom thing, the dance, and and uh Lori Laughlin's character has to go to the bathroom. And she winds up going having to go to the bathroom what looks like <laughs> across the field, somewhere near near like where the where the girls' change rooms are. Nowhere near where the like where it looks like the gym is. Like she has to walk down the worst hallway and suddenly I'm like, wow, it's class of 1984 all over again. But like, so that just seemed really what the fuck. Like I've never seen a school where like, if you're at a gym and you, and get a dance, you have to go to the bathroom. It's not like at least just 10 feet away. Maybe it's a change room, but it's 10 feet away. Not like down the horrible hallway. (laughs) And then then they kidnap her where she does it. Where she hides behind a, a wall Sorry, I'm stealing no, this please, one. No, please, please. She, she hides behind, she turns the corner because she's suspecting something, hides behind the wall, 
and then they just grab her. I'm like, how did she not see them coming around the corner? They're clearly about a foot away from her as they you, grab her the whole you, time. You, you, you are missing the most boogaloo thing. James Spader is hiding behind the door of the bathroom as she exits. <laughs> That's true. There is nowhere for him to stand. The door backs into a wall. She she would have purposely had to open the door just far enough that it didn't hit him <laughs> without breaking his nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that really would have put the whole kidnapping thing on the wrong foot if he had broken his nose immediately, like at the beginning of the kidnapping. Oh, totally. <laughs> and the, but then they then they do kidnap her and they take her out somewhere, like to the middle of the Everglades, I assume, to so that they can rape yeah. her. And then, of course, she manages to, um, they douse her in gas. She manages to get away from them. And then the next what thing you know. What was the plan with the gas, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> it seems a big uh, that, that was my boogaloo moment. Like was... They had, like, two different plans there. Yeah, it's like they didn't, it's like maybe they didn't discuss what the plan was. And they, one guy was they, like, we're going to uh, burn her, right? Was... And we're like, that wasn't my plan. <laughs> one guy's taking off his pants, yet they're dousing her with gasoline, which, like, Somehow I thought, yeah, you know, that would get her naked, I suppose. <laughs> if she had the freedom to take off her own clothes. <laughs> but the the plan was not clear at all. I, oh. I mean, it felt rapey. But until we actually got the shot of the guy's ass, I wasn't sure it was, that's what they were going for. It was a rape scene. And then, yeah, it was. It did take a long time to to establish itself as rape. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And then, and then she manages to pull a deadly prey and run to the uh, run to the the theme park. And... Dude, she, the, the, this the, her for the whole movie. Like they set her up at the beginning. You think she's going to be just as much of a badass as anybody else? But no, that when no. The, the movie no. starts, <laughs> that she is not. And then I don't know how anybody figures out where to find them in the first place. They're pretty much just like, well, I guess we're going to have to go back to the theme park because now that we know that she's missing. <laughs> no, they. <laughs> it's the only other set we built. So, yeah, yeah they, I guess that's where we have to go. <laughs> see, you're assuming she ran farther. I thought they took her back to the theme park because they needed the blood from the animals to upset the dogs. <laughs> I you. So, this is one of those oh, that's cases right. where yeah, you, that you, Nick, you have thought this plan <laughs> through way more than they thought this plan through. <laughs> yeah. I, and I mean the characters in the film, <laughs> uh, or anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But filmmakers yeah. or characters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that that whole <laughs> that whole segment, and that, and then this is the point where we actually pretty much lose Eric Stoltz. Completely for the rest of the movie. <laughs> I wondered if they didn't have him for enough days or something. Yeah, yeah, because he doesn't appear at all. They they mentioned <laughs> they him at the very it. end. As like he's oh he's off here. He's he's, he's, he's waiting gonna be for here us any minute now. Yeah, but you know was... they stab they bought they take the time to establish Eric Stoltz as the nice guy for Lori Laughlin and the girlfriend for the for Shannon, whatever his name is, whatever his character name was, they take the time to establish them and use them in no way, shape, or form in the movie. <laughs> so uh, uh, by they're, that they're in the they're in the afternoon special side of the movie. Yes. James Spader's in the horror movie side. <laughs> so so for that I'll give it a five because this movie had no idea what it actually was. <laughs> Oh Jesus! You hadn't even scored it yet. <laughs> I thought we were way past you. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you you took the most boogaloo. Um, you That's did. Me. You 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 did miss the end. The <laughs> end was beautiful, where the uncle is standing outside his park, just raking in the cash with a sign that says "Bloodbath at Santa's Village." <laughs> supposedly mass murder or some kind of criminal activity all of a sudden is a draw for everyone to come and have fun at Santa's Funland. No, oh, yeah, that's, that's the most re that's actually the most realistic thing in the movie. Hey, well, hey kids. <laughs> hey kids, a bunch of people were murdered here. Want to go see it? Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. I would I would stop for that. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny though the way it's presented because you're sure that 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 the uncle is dead. And then all of a oh, sudden yeah. he's just there going, <laughs> he just walk, walks it off. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and the kid at the end, uh, just staring off like these motherfuckers. Like they were uh, preparing for the sequel on this one. God, that's ballsy. <laughs> oh, that kid, that kid. And when you saw that happen, and it's just like for real. Like you, you like you oh, just, whatever. Oh. oh yeah. What and what would the title have been? New kids, the old kid. I, I even new, even newer kids. <laughs> the newest kids. <laughs> the newest kids. Ah. Uh, I'm glad I saw this. I enjoyed the hell out of it, but <laughs> Boogaloo, probably not. Did oh, I need a score. score. Uh, yeah, that's, I was uh, thinking. I was three. Like, wait to get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Jackman. You didn't score it yet. He did. He I said, said three. 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 Did you? Oh, three. Okay. I don't right. see. Sometimes it's hard to hear the score. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes right. you're looking up, you're looking up other Santa's villages and you miss it. <laughs> Sometimes they it just kind of gets mixed in with other things. <laughs> yeah, I, I found the the fact that they just established the, the the father as this military guy and the mother, and then all of a sudden in a phone call they're dead. Like just when you're about to establish the characters and you're you're thinking you're gonna get to know them so it would have some impact. And they said that they're dead, then there's a funeral, then they're in, in Florida. And uh and, and the kids by the way, they handle all this very well. Like it is not upset at all, um, uh, with the, with this sequence of events. Uh, I found that pretty pretty WTF. Uh I think the the police officer um at some point in time when he's called to the to the amusement park and there's uh, for a crime and his line at the end was, "Well, I guess I got to do some investigating now, huh?" I thought that was a little, <laughs> a little WTF. I, I thought that fit right into the investigating he'd been doing all the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, yes, that is part of your job, I suppose, as a police <laughs> officer. Um, but, but my favorite Boogaloo moment is when they show up. The uncle brings them from the funeral to the to Florida, and they show up, and he shows them where they're going to live, and this and that, um, you know, and and. And he says the line is, "Well, let's celebrate. We'll get some hot dogs <laughs> <laughs> and hamburgers." No, he just said dogs. No, he we'll said burgers. I uh, rewatched the movie. Uh, I am know. very re- rarely wrong when it comes to food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't question him in his own in his zone. Yeah, it's like let's spend forty two cents on a on a meal and celebrate. <laughs> Hey, this get guy's some... a get rich quick scheme guy. He's that's uh, that's all he's got on him right now is forty two cents to celebrate. Occasionally I'll celebrate with hot dogs. I'm sorry, you're just prejudiced against the dog. That's true. Uh, hot five. dogs are awesome. Five. Uh, five. All right. Well I gotta I gotta I gotta yeah. I got I got a couple there's still a couple left for me here. So they've got this bet. That uh, they're that you know one of them's going to sleep with uh, with Lori Laughlin, which you know, um, so w- we may have seen that plot before. Hey, yes. but it, go- it goes in a strange direction. So, but the 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 t- the tries to pick her up are the most oh. amazingly <laughs> awkward, disturbing um, wooing that has ever been seen on film. So one guy goes up to her in the library and in- and invites her. What was he doing? He invites her to a dog fight. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, it says, like, I, I, I don't know what you see in all these books and shit. Um, James Spader shows up at her, uh, at, uh, you know, the amusement park, which also has a gas station attached to it. You got to, you got to diversify. And, uh, uh, and impresses her by getting $4 of gas <laughs> pumped into his, his van. <laughs> hey, he did try to pay with 100 it's right. It, yeah. And uh, he's, he's <laughs> and, you know, he asks her out. She says no. He asks her out and she says no. And he says, uh, and then he's like very intensely says, I'm asking nicely. <laughs> and I, and I, I wrote down these, these guys are irresistible. <laughs> yeah. How could she? Uh, the, the one in the library, you have to almost see it to believe it. He like literally comes over to her, like hangs all over her. He's chewing gum, just practically drooling on her. And and you're like, geez, how can she turn that down? Just that <laughs> charm. Hey, perhaps things are different in the Florida Everglades, and that kind of thing is is uh, the best way to pitch woo. I was about to say you're being <laughs> way too hard on this, guys. That is Florida chic. <laughs> <laughs> 
See, you know, it's it's just like you we're we're used to we're used to our own ways of, of pitching our own womb. <laughs> but uh, but maybe it's different. That's what I do to be able to sleep at night. <laughs> well, but but uh, my my favorite my favorite I mean it, Jay Spader's accent was pretty what the fuck. But my my top what the fuck moment for this is uh, I mentioned that uh, you know our hero breaks into James Spader's house to threaten him. James Spader's in like, you know, basically bikini shorts when he's sleeping. That's a little awkward. But if you look closely at the wall of the room of James Spader, so it's his own bedroom, he has a picture on the wall of himself. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> How it's did like I a, miss that? It's a promote. It's like it's like a like a you know actor's headshot. They probably just like, do you have a picture of yourself? Like I got this. That's, that's what <laughs> you know. I never realized realized you know he had such a body on him. Like he uh, should he should have been in Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that, admit was not, I, that was not a, a <laughs> sentence I expect to hear any of us say. Or <laughs> I'm sorry. I know James Spader of today, who basically plays shrubs. And you know, he, he, in this movie, he was doing the studly thing. And I, I, yes, he, I mean, he was a he was an attractive man for his like you know for about, for about ten years. He was he was quite a what's the male it, version I, of sex pot? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Five is what I gave it anyway. This movie, yeah, anyway. Tough turf. Tough turf. <laughs> I can't believe where we've gotten up <laughs> to. And tough turf, he, which came out a little while after this, he's the new kid that actually that comes into the territory and he becomes a sex symbol coming out of that movie. And when well, did men start that. wearing bikini briefs? This must have been early in like the, you know, the Ike Lycra type underwear. <laughs> he's a, hey, look. I, I may disrespect uh, hot dogs, but you do not disrespect bikini briefs. The banana hammock? Yeah, you do not. The nut hugger does that <laughs> much. Uh, uh, later yeah. in the Italian stallion. Uh, memorable moments. <laughs> uh, well... I mean, honestly, there's, there's probably, I mean, I have forgotten a lot of this movie <laughs> <laughs> after two weeks. There's no question about that. Um, you know, it, we, we did talk about it earlier and, and I know it, it was, it was Boogaloo, but, but the line designer jeans for this sexy little body is never going to come out of my head now. <laughs> and then, and then there's a, there's a point where, where the uncle is uh, is all getting super excited because the, because they got some money, they got some customers, and he says, "Soon enough, we're going to be farting through silk." Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, "Oh, okay. Well, that that's a, that's a, again that that's a word picture, an interesting word picture that you've uh, put forth there." So, so just for those, I'll but give. It, a... Isn't that also a cliche? I've heard that elsewhere. <laughs> Well, fair enough. I don't know that I've heard it elsewhere, so I'm going to give it a four. Um, I have to go lower, to I am not going to remember this movie next week. I might have seen it before, and nothing <laughs> stuck. Um, yeah, uh, two is the highest I can give it. There, there's nothing memorable about this. Uh, the most memorable thing for me would probably be I spent three hours after the movie trying to figure out what was happening in the rape scene and rape uh, is pretty simple in a movie i suppose uh, so uh, uh see uh, this is where the the fact that they went ma- more mainstream with it is helping me i think that the uh the decapitation was pretty memorable i think the the uh lighting what on fire decapitation uh, on, on the there was a decapitation on, on the um, oh with the roller coaster roller right. coaster okay. yeah oh i forgot yeah I thought yeah. that was pretty uh, memorable. The decapitation, you were the only one who remembered. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Same, I thought it was memorable. And same with the same with the lighting on fire and and that whole thing. Plus, just to me, this incredibly impressive young cast of of actors that either either met the potential or or didn't, but had a great potential. That was impressively put together. That's one thing Cunningham you have to give him credit for, is for being able to find an impressive young cast. Uh, I, I actually am a little higher on this, quite a bit higher than you guys. I, I, I give this a six. Nice. Uh, so when when this movie came up, 
uh, I said, I- I've seen that. And this woman, and one of, who was it? You, uh, Stan, that put this up? Nope. No, and I you was- said, yeah, you said, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. I'm like, don't worry. I don't remember anything of it. Um, and it wasn't that long ago. It was like four or five years ago. <laughs> It wasn't like I watched this in the 80s. Um, and honestly, I watched it two weeks ago and still had to kind of rewatch about half of it. Uh, so only one for me. I, it's proven oh. not to be memorable to me. <laughs> I don't think I'll forget uh, James Spader's hair. That That's literally the only thing I remembered. I'm like, is that the one with James Spader? He's got the weird blonde hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Our final category is crazy concept. Um, I'll... I'll, I'll give it some points because because even though I think that all of the elements have been done before, not all of the elements have been done in the same movie. Generally, you don't <laughs> you don't normally go from after school special to like the to the crazy rape, um, uh, you know, Deliverance, Straw Dogs kind of kind of action plus plus you know the um, get rich quick scheme crazy guy crazy uncle so for that i'll give it a five but but it's not like it hasn't been done before just not in this order i i can't even go that high i have to say the pitch of this movie probably was how much money can sean Han, uh cannon uh, cunningham get if he doesn't do a horror film <laughs> the answer one hundred ninety nine thousand. <laughs> Oh, he can get six million. But, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, um, there there was no thought behind behind this movie. No, this is just him trying to establish a actual career outside the horror genre and failing pretty spectacularly miserably. Like, <laughs> wow, um, yeah, two. See, I I think it takes the a lot of. Uh, it takes a lot, like it's stuff that's been out there before, but it takes a lot of it and does turn it on its head and twists it and puts it in an order. There's really no first act. There's no, the, the like normal movie structure is not, does not apply to this thing. There's really, <laughs> there's only one act essentially. I mean, like it's just <laughs> boom. Like it's, it's, it's like it, the, and the characterizations and the way they don't, that the, they, 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 they just, it's, it, it goes zero to, to 100. Like okay, these guys are assholes. Here, here we go. Like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take its time to do anything. And so in that way, it's it's got a weird vibe to it that kind of gives it this crazy concept. But it is all familiar shit. So I'm only going to go with a four. I think uh, I think as Stan said, it's the it's the weird like giant swing between tone that is uh that's the big kind of standout thing for me uh only i'm only gonna go with a three on it though all right that brings us to the end of scoring uh each season we have six secret modifiers uh this film does have a one it does get a minus one for the handicap modifier uh every every movie this year if it does not score a 60 coming out of the main round of scoring gets another minus one to ding it for having been in the season at all Uh, (laughs) (laughs) and that is uh that brings us to 35 out of 100 which puts it in the bottom five movies we have done so far definitely understandable um uh, it, it yeah, it, it does not seem like like when you're watching it and you, and you're and you're going through, especially w- when you look at, at some of the other movies that we've been talking about. Like, I mean, it's like Deadly Prey, Cyborg Cop, The Weird Man, and then you've got well, both state well, State Park and New Kids. Suddenly, like we took a turn, and then you know, <laughs> this is like like oh man, but you know, like so much, and you see like Chopping Mall, it, like they're crazy over the top, and then it's like it's the New Kids. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, it's a movie. <laughs> yes, once again, I don't That's disagree with that. where our scoring landed. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I'm glad Although you're here I'd as, like a, to as, a, remind, as a check and balance, yeah. <laughs> I would like to remind people that objective quality is not a factor, because this is actually a damn good film. I enjoyed the hell of it. I just, yeah. On, on <laughs> our on tough. our scale, it does not score well. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I, if I watch this again, I would not want to watch it with a boogaloo lens. I would just want to watch it as uh, like, oh yeah, okay, I'd, I'll watch that and let's see if I actually enjoy it uh, with you know as a movie. 
it does skew the way you're looking at things for sure. Mm, it does. All right. Well, next next episode, we are going off the deep end because we are going to watch Samurai Cup from Amir Shirvan. So that uh, that should you know wrap us up on a good note. I I would hope. Um, Jim, let's let's uh, let's do some business. What else is happening next episode, though? Oh, nothing else. That I'm almost looking forward to more than talking about Samurai Cop. <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. We're not. We're not choosing new movies or anything like that. So, nope, nothing, nothing at all. Jim, business. <laughs> all right. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo, where you'll find out what season nine is, and uh, you can find. Our podcast sponsors, We Talk Podcasts at wetalkpodcast.com, and they are on Twitter and on Facebook, and they'll also keep you up to date on what movies we're going to do in Season 9. That's right, and you can watch Samurai Cop on Tubi, just like we did. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, you can, for free on Tubi. That's right. So, yes, next episode, we are moving on with Sim- Season 8, Simply the BS with Samurai Cop, and yes, Jack, we are choosing movies for Season 9, so... I know you're excited. Well, I think we're all excited. Announcing our movies for season yeah. nine is probably a better way to put it. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, given that we all have like uh, ten movies, I think, I think <laughs> well, I, choosing I is pretty I'm accurate. Up seven, I'm up to seventeen movies. <laughs> I was just averaging out, just in case. But you know, there's there's going to be a lot almost, of movies, almost enough to to get through the Nick filter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's really it. He's it's like that. <sighs> One big Nick filter, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone too far too fast. <laughs> too close to the sun, Stan. Wrap it up. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> join us next episode on se- season eight, Simply the BS, and let's get out of here. So for Jim, for Jack, and for Nick, I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and thanks for listening to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. You want to go to a dog fight? <laughs> <laughs> They are brother and sister alone. I said Mac and Mom are dead. Killed in a car crash. On their own. Without parents. Without friends. <laughs> trying to make it in a new town. Something bothering you, cousin? No. Nothing ever bothers me. Yeah! Facing a dangerous new enemy. Yeah, I can get it. Says who? That's me and 50 bucks. A gang that will stop at nothing to add one new word to their lives. Terror. You think we ought to light ourselves a little fire? No! You want crazy? Well, I'll show you crazy. the director of the original Friday the 13th comes a new Ticket to Terror. Striking back. You want crazy? <laughs>